Today I'm going to share with you 10 art supplies I wish I hadn't bought. Is that the right English grammar? Hey everyone, welcome to another video. If you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Irit. I'm a watercolor and mixed media artist based in Austria and Europe and on my channel I share my love for watercolors and art supplies. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like, leave me a comment and of course subscribe. I would love to have you here on my channel. Hopefully, you know, this video will give you a few cautionary tales <laughs> on what not to get. No, I'm joking. Um, this is by no means, uh, I don't want to like trash any brands. Actually, on the contrary, uh, some of the brands I'm going to talk about, probably most of them are actually brands I really, really like, and I think they make wonderful products, but it's, I guess it's more about kind of knowing what to buy and not necessarily, you know, having to try everything or buy the full set of everything. So uh, this is just my opinion and I will try to explain why I regret these purchases. But again, it doesn't mean that, you know, the brand is bad or the product is bad. It just means it wasn't the right fit for me or it wasn't the right fit for me in that, you know, format. So hopefully you will understand more as I get into my picks. I have here my trusty list. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, so let's get into it. So the first one I want to talk about is the full set of the Faber-Castell Polychromos. And this was actually a Christmas gift that was gifted to me. I probably had it on my wish list uh, a few years back, uh, probably more when I was kind of in the beginning of my art journey and kind of more into mixed media and less necessarily focused on watercolors. What can I tell you? There is nothing <laughs> more <laughs> luxurious and beautiful than a huge full set of beautiful pencils and I really believe that the Faber-Castell polychromos are you know one of the best oil-based coloring pencils out there however I never fell in love with them I'm now kind of using them again I also uh, my daughter is into uh, kind of sketching with pencils my 12 year old and with my six year five year old <laughs> It's almost six. Uh, it's we always, you know, pencils are just like such a nice, clean way of arting together. So I am getting good use out of these pencils, but I never needed like all the colors in the range, and it just they, they never really worked for me. However, since I am an art supplies collector, I did pick up a set, full set. Of, or I think it was the like almost the full set because they came out with some new colors of the Prisma color pencils, which are inferior in quality to the Faber Castell, but superior in uh, just their color choices and the brightness of the pencils. I just love them more, and the way that I use them, I don't do any like special. I don't sketch just in pencils so all of these techniques of like blending and layering and like all these things that one does with uh, oil or wax pencils I don't do those I sketch with pencils very simply uh, in watercolor mostly dom predominantly watercolor paintings and I just love the Prismacolor pencils so this is really an example how for someone uh, product that might be in quality not on par with another just it just worked better for me I just fell in love with the feel the colors the color range and of course the price is also great of the Prismacolor pencils I know a lot of people had issues with them I never had an issue not a single pencil like broke on me in a way that other pencils didn't and I didn't notice any you know irregularities or defects in the pencils so maybe I got lucky but yeah that that large set of Faber-Castell polychromos never really delivered it's like beautiful promise 
uh, for me personally. So let's move on to something else. And this is a little bit more general, but I will give a specific example. This, I'm talking about basic sets of watercolors, especially like student grade. And I mean this for people like me who have already a large collection of artist grade watercolors. The problem is that as a YouTuber, the most viewed videos on pretty much every channel that I know that does product reviews and other stuff are the product reviews. And it's not surprising because I, many times I search specifically on YouTube for a review on something that I'm interested in. So those are the most viewed videos on my channel by far. And, and so it's always tempting to, you know, try a lot of the sets out there to uh, attract new viewers. And also because one of the things I love to do is share my experience and um, tell you what I think about, you know, if, if a set is good or not, if it's worth your money or not. But at some point it just becomes a bit much. So I have two kids, we make good use of all of my lesser <laughs> non-Daniel Smith uh, watercolor sets, but I can still think of uh, an example. One of the sets that I bought was a Van Gogh set of 24 half pens in a plastic box. And while I do think that set is a really nice set if you don't have any watercolors and you're just starting out, I still regret buying it because I already had a couple of the smaller Van Gogh sets and I was very familiar with the paint and I just, this was completely redundant. So I really think, you know, if you want to expand your collection or if you want to try a new brand, I really recommend picking out, like doing just a little bit online digging and seeing if that range has maybe some unique colors. So in the example of Van Gogh, the Van Gogh range has some really fun colors that are called the Dusk colors. My favorite is Dusk Pink and Dusk Yellow. And those are basically just colors mixed with a granulating black. But I love the result. And those two are like some of my favorite darks that I keep in my palettes as kind of convenience colors uh, because they're already kind of mixed. It's not a single pigment. So um, that would be a great way to try a new brand instead of just buying another basic palette that usually has very standard colors. These basic palettes are, you know, they're great as starter sets, but once you have a good starter set, especially if you have an artist grade uh, set, then I think you're really wasting your money if you buy more of those basic sets because you'll end up with colors that you don't use. Every artist, you know, the more you paint, the more um, specific you get with your color choices. And I don't think I know any single artist who loves all, you know, 12 or 24 colors that come in a basic set. So usually you kind of develop your own color sense and color palette. So. I really think this is uh, a waste and that particular uh, palette, I wish I hadn't bought it. If we're speaking about Van Gogh, for example, they also have really, really nice smaller sets that I have a couple of reviews on my channel. Those are really fun. Uh, they have one that is like mostly pinks and purples. They have one that is more muted. Uh, I think they also have a metallic one. So that's a great way to try a new brand, see if you like their formulation, if you like the, the um, consistency of the paint, the intensity, find maybe new colors, and then you can be detective and, you know, go look if uh, other companies or if artist grade uh, paint use the same pigment, if you really like a specific color. So try to search for those more unique sets and like specialty paints that other brands don't offer. And, you know, instead of just like a, a basic 24, 12, or 36 colors. So that's my other regret. Okay, moving on. This one is a tough one. So I'm talking about the Jean Haynes brushes from Rosemary & Co. This is my most expensive brushes. And I think they are 
beautiful brushes. These I bought kind of at the beginning of my loose watercolor adventure. I was very, very inspired by Jean Haynes. I think she has an amazing style in paintings. And you know, I wanted to paint like her, so that means I need her brushes and I need the paint that she uses and all those things. <laughs> and she has this uh, brush set it has three brushes and they are made with uh, sable hair which is you know the top of the line and surprise surprise they did not make me a better artist <laughs> although they are really beautiful to paint with since then i have switched to synthetic hair i don't use natural hair and i honestly even though i think they're beautiful brushes they don't get much use because they're just like a bit too precious for me to use and I know that's stupid but I also know that other people feel the same that they're kind of scared to use expensive supplies now actually brushes I think are easier to use than something like really expensive paint or really expensive uh, paper because if you take care of your brushes they will last you a lifetime and I actually I have all of my brushes that I ever used synthetic or not uh, I never had to throw away a watercolor brush. I, you know, I make sure that I clean them properly. I never leave them sitting in water ever. And they are all in mint condition. Maybe I have a couple of uh, Skoda Perla brushes that I really, you know, used heavily that have like a few stray hairs, but that's it. So actually, I think brushes are a good place to kind of invest but I'll give you another um, like my current favorite are the Tracy Lebenson handmade brushes and he has the synthetic options they're still very pricey but I find them just a joy to use and those are pretty much the ones I grab when I paint and not the sable brushes so the, I feel they are more special and I feel they give me a very uh, kind of unique expressive brush stroke which I don't get from the Jean Haynes brushes uh, not to say that they're not beautiful brushes they are they're made by a wonderful manufacturer uh, Rosemary & Co I don't know if I said that and they are beautiful brushes but they are not unique you can find a lot of similar brushes from other manufacturers and yeah they're just like too precious and I love 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 my synthetic brushes and you know you can really find large synthetic brushes for a fraction of the price of sable hair and now the synthetic fibers that companies make are amazing so for me personally, it was, you know, I did enjoy them, but at the end of the day, I'm like, that wasn't probably the best use of like 130 or 150 euros that these three brushes cost me. So moving on, another tricky one. These are some sensitive topics here. Uh, I bought a few years back a set of M. Graham's cobalt, like a set of uh, the, their cobalt watercolors and M. Graham is a US based uh, brand and these are honey based watercolors loved by many artists and I understand why personally I don't enjoy that formulation I'm not saying this is a bad paint although the cobalts can be tricky this is not an M gram issue it's a every brand issue if you've painted with the cobalts then you know that I guess the pigment itself I'm not an expert on pigment but I guess the pigment itself tends to be dry and so the brands need to add the manufacturers need to add a lot of binder to get the paint to be you know workable and stay moist and many times like most times these tubes of paint will just have a lot of binder in them so this is also the case for the M gram and specifically um, I like the cobalt uh, turquoise or teal but the other colors I never really fell in love with uh, this is personal taste the formulation is like one thing this is a personal preference uh, the colors are a personal taste for example their cobalt violet is very very on the blue side 
which for someone might be perfect, but I prefer my cobalt violets on the pink side. I'm laughing because I talk a lot about cobalt violet in this uh, on this channel. So yeah, all in all, it was not right for me. Now the formulation, I think as a studio paint, um, you know, it's it's very easy to work with because it's like honey base and so moist and everything, but I don't like it. I like to switch out colors, move things around. It always stays sticky and you can't really travel with it. I had one of the of the paints in my travel palette and, and I, I, it just moves around. I had to travel with the palette all the time horizontal, which is a, kind of a nuisance because otherwise it would have like moved around and invaded the neighboring colors. So I just find it for me, it's uh, inconvenient. Uh, I will say that they have, I will say that they have one color that I really like with, which is the ultramarine pink. Uh, and it's a beautiful ultramarine pink. Not every brand has an ultramarine pink, but the M gram one is beautiful. It's just, yeah, the cobalt set was not a right fit for me. The formulation is not a right fit for me. Uh, they do have other like beautiful sets. So, you know, if you don't like the formulation, you can use it maybe as inspiration to assemble a similar set from a different brand whose formulation you like. But yeah, that was a bit of a dud for me. Next, ooh, another, another good one, Daniel Smith. So Daniel Smith is featured twice, twice in this list. <laughs> And I'll start with the less explosive um, product. And I'm talking about their range of grays. So a few years ago, Daniel Smith came, up, came out with a few tubes of different grays that were, I guess, curated or formulated by uh, a couple of very um, accomplished and well-known artists uh, whose artwork I really enjoy. And, you know, they have a very kind of uh, easy to recognize style. I feel it's also very uh, like trendy. I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just something that I see a lot of kind of similar things. Um, and yeah, it's this kind of urban, maybe classical European sketching of very kind of loose watercolor, beautiful architecture, you know, scene, like street scenes in Paris and European cities. And there's a lot of grays and very atmospheric, beautiful paintings. So Daniel Smith came out with a range of grays and I picked up a few and I have a dedicated video of like showing them and like sketching with them. And at the end of the day, they are not for me and this, but I'm not someone who says, you know, you should never use a gray out of a tube, or you should never use this, or you should never use that. You won't hear me say that. Uh, but for me personally, I have found that I don't use gray out of the tube, that when I use neutrals out of the tube, I actually prefer to use semi-neutrals or more muted colors, you could say. Colors like, for example, um, What's it called? Moonlight? The moon color from Daniel Smith. I don't know why I'm blocking. Is it moonlight? <laughs> uh, that or the dusk colors that I mentioned from Rembrandt or Van Gogh. Uh, those are or something even like Sodalite Genuine, which is like a bluish gray. That's probably more on the neutral side, like Zoazite, a gorgeous, gorgeous muted, mutant, <laughs> mutant <laughs> green. Uh, those are the colors that I like using and when I use neutrals, I usually mix them myself from colors that I already have in the painting. So this for me was mostly a waste of money. I should probably sell those uh, tubes. Uh, some of the grays are really, really beautiful, but I find that I don't need, I don't use them as convenience colors. I don't need them in my palette and for neutrals, I really prefer to mix my own. And so that was a bit of, yeah, a dud for me personally. The, the colors are lovely, the paint is good, there's nothing bad about this product. It's just not a good fit for me, not something that I enjoyed or used a lot. Okay, let's talk about the next thing. And this one is also a controversial topic. No, I'll explain my uh, 
my position on this. So I'm talking about 100% cotton paper. And 100% cotton paper is usually what you hear pretty much every watercolor artist recommend to use. And I also recommend 100% cotton. I also enjoy painting on 100% cotton watercolor paper, but I also paint on watercolor paper that is not 100% and actually currently my favorite papers are not 100% cotton. So what one needs to understand when you hear someone, if it's me or anyone else, you know, you're watching, um, artist, enthusiast, whatever, that each one of us has different go-to techniques and different ways of painting. And there are products that are more suitable to a certain way of painting. And then also with certain techniques, it's really not necessary to use the top of the line uh, watercolor paper. So 100% cotton paper is a really good choice for many, many classical, watercolor techniques. It's definitely a good choice for like a go-to watercolor paper, especially considering that there are a lot of really bad non-100% cotton papers out there. And so I understand that it is a good kind of recommendation to give uh, your students if you're teaching, but yeah, there are two problems with this. First of all, I really found that it's not necessary, at least for me, for the way that I paint, for the techniques that I use. I love using cellulose paper and my current favorite is from Hanne Mühle. Uh, what I do recommend is to use 300 GSM paper and above, uh, cotton or not. I just really don't like using thinner paper. It starts to buckle, it's really annoying, so I actually don't use any paper that is lighter in weight. So for me personally, the weight is more important right now than the uh, composition of the paper. And the other problem with uh, cotton is that it can get expensive. So I think an, a brand that everyone loves is Arches. And you see a lot of people say, I only paint on Arches and that's fine. It's a beautiful paper, but uh, I found, especially at the beginning of my art journey, when I felt that, you know, I was doing a lot of exercises and a lot of what I did, like those first brush miles, it was, you know, it, it just like went, went to the trash. There was nothing to do with this. It was an essential part of my journey and my studying and developing, but nothing worth holding on to. And if you only get expensive paper, especially if you're on a budget, then you can get precious with it. That's how I felt. And I still have a beautiful 100% watercolor paper that I'm trying to use it up and not be precious about it. I still have some that I bought like years ago. And yeah, it's just like, you know, it's too nice to use. So. That's another reason that I really, really like my cellulose papers. I buy, right now, Hanne Mühle has this paper that is nameless. I don't know what this paper is. It just says aquarelle on top of it. And at my art shop, they have just like a huge pile of it. And every time I go there, I grab a few pads. They're like large pads with 15 sheets, I think, that sell for like 12 euros. And I'm like, yeah, I can go through those without feeling, you know, like I'm wasting paper. And and so I encourage you to try different papers that are not 100% and just maybe see, maybe uh, it also fits your style of painting. Usually those non 100% cotton papers um, are not great for glazing or, you know, any kind of like distressing. Uh, for those you're probably better off with 100%, but I don't do those things. I usually use two to three layers of watercolors and I wait, wait for things to dry. I don't distress anything. And so for me, most of the time, I don't feel like I need 100% uh, cotton, but that's now and it might change, but the point is not to get things you feel precious about. So it might be worth taking the time 
and searching for other options and maybe you'll fall in love with a paper that is more affordable and you'll just feel more comfortable you know enjoying it and using it without all the time thinking ah you know every little pad costs like 30 euros and um, I, I really have to like save paper and not use it up as much so that one was a bit of a no-no for me the next item I have regrets <laughs> buying kind of are the Stillman and Byrne hardcover sketchbooks. Now, I think the Stillman and Byrne sketchbooks are fantastic, and my favorites are their uh, soft cover. I think those are beautiful. I went through several of them, really, really enjoyed them. But the hard covers, they're just a bit too serious, a bit too fancy. Um, you know, they're, they have like this black hard cover and I don't know, I like color, I like the look of like handmade things and those sketchbooks were just a bit too fancy and too serious and they just were like, I didn't, I didn't feel they were as inviting as my other <laughs> sketchbooks. So completely uh, personal thing here, uh, I think the, the product itself is great quality and yeah, but again, it's it goes back to that, like, too fancy, too precious. But that one wasn't even too precious. It was just like, you're just too serious for me. I'm not ready for this kind of serious <laughs> relationship. So, uh, I don't know. I really, really enjoy their soft cover ones, and uh, those I really uh, recommend. But the hard cover were just like, meh. Not so great. The next product are the White Knights pencils. I won't go into detail because I just posted a review. I saw this in the shop. I was very excited because I really love the White Knights watercolors. I think they're one of the best, um, you know, budget-friendly watercolors out there. Uh, they have great sets as like a starting set and it's just a really, really good affordable brand. So I thought I would try their pencils and they were disappointing to say the least. So I kind of wish I hadn't picked that set up, but now I know and now you know and you can uh, decide if you want to buy them or not. The penultimate <laughs> item is the Daniel Smith Ultimate Mixing Set. Now this was a big dud and this was the first product, the first half pan set that Daniel Smith came out with and I don't, actually my problem is not with the color selection or the formulation of the half paints. I think Daniel Smith did a really good job with uh, how they formulated their half pans. I don't know if it's just like their, um, you know, regular paint poured into pans or if they changed the formula. Uh, I know Schminke has the same formula and then other brands, I think Winsor Newton have a different formula. So I don't know what Daniel Smith did, but their half pan formulation is really, really good. And I thought the color selection in the ultimate mixing set was also very um, well thought of. And yeah, it was really well made. The palette was a disaster and I have a video on that. I think they should have recalled this product. I think it's still available and I think they should recall it. And since then they came out with a traditional sets in the regular metal tins which is if you want to buy a set that's the one you should buy don't buy the ones in the little plastic palettes because those are just bad 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 you can watch my video and i love daniel smith paint it's after rembrandt it's my go-to paint if i can't find the color i like in rembrandt then i go to moon glow Moon glow. Why did I think moonlight? Moon glow. If you want, I knew moonlight wasn't right. <laughs> so uh, I love Daniel Smith paint. It's really one of my like top paints to use. And if someone told me you have to use just Daniel Smith paint um, without paying the <laughs> import taxes, <laughs> I would be okay with that. But yeah, that set was like that palette was just a big, big fail. I don't know how they put out that product. Okay, last but not least is the Portable Painter Palette. Now, this is again something of like, I just didn't fall in love with this palette. I agree that the design is very clever and very sophisticated and there's nothing exactly like that on the market, but 
I didn't like it. I didn't find it. I don't know. It's just like to me, the whole setup was not what I wanted. And I just preferred to have a little um, metal tin. Uh, if I want something smaller than my go-to red palette that I use all the time and I travel with. Um, I just prefer to have a regular metal tin where I can stick like 20 something paints and not be limited to 12 and uh, or if I want something really compact then I love 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 the little uh, boxes from art kit I think they're called I talk about them also in other videos but the portable painter it can only carry 12 colors and I just never really like I don't know I guess if you are going out and you know you're setting up for like a nice painting session of a couple of hours or something then it's not a big deal to start like setting up all those parts but for me when I go out you know I usually like I don't know sit in a coffee place for like half an hour and it's just like a bit yeah I never fell in love with it and I really have other uh, palettes that I prefer to uh, go out and paint with or you know travel with so that one although I you know take my hat off to the design of it because I do think it's clever and I know a lot of people love it I never fell in love with it um, I found for example the cute round etcher uh, ceramic palettes a lot more charming and uh, you know like inviting to use than the portable painter maybe again it's like a bit too serious product for me so thank you for watching this long rambling video i hope you found it helpful i would love to know which products you know you picked up and you know there was a big hype and everyone was like ooh and ah and you were like yeah this is not so so great in my opinion so i would love to know and i will see you soon in another video take care bye bye if you enjoyed